Hi there. You know, I figure we better do uh, an important PSAT update because of COVID-19. Um, I know that the PSAT is important for 10th and 11th graders, but this year is a little wonky because of the pandemic. And so I thought it'd be a good idea if you and I spent some time together today. I hope you have a cup of coffee and we'll just sit here and we'll talk about how to make the best out of this very challenging and uh, super weird situation. My name is Lee Benz. Hi, I'm the home scholar. My mission is to help parents homeschool through middle school and high school. And my goal for today is to help you understand the PSAT during this really crazy year. And it's a little challenging because I don't know how much you already know about the PSAT. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go through an overview of these challenges, and then I'll leave you some information that you can use to do more research on the PSAT when it's a normal year. How does that sound? So basically, the PSAT has two purposes. The first is that it really gives the student just some practice taking standardized tests, right? So it's not really scary. It's just intended for them to have fun <laughs> practicing taking a test. The second part of the PSAT is the qualifying test for the National Merit Scholarship. So maybe you've driven by a school and you've seen, we have a National Merit Scholar on campus, right? Well, it all starts with the PSAT. So really, the first thing I want you to know is that the PSAT has two purposes. It's for fun and it's for profit. And these two things are kind of different. If your child does not generally score above the 95th percentile, really the PSAT is just for practice. And that can give you a little bit of uh, freedom to take a deep breath and relax and not get all stressed out. Now, the PSAT is taken at a local public high school or private high school. It can't be taken at home, but you just call the school, the local school, and you say you're homeschooling, that you're a homeschool parent, and you wanted to ask how to register your homeschooler for the test. On test day, homeschoolers are instructed to, on their answer key, indicate that they're homeschooled. And that way, you as the parent get their test scores and it doesn't go to the school and the school doesn't get to claim that they have a National Merit Scholar, even though that student was homeschooled. Although, frankly, I do see that all the time. Now, the PSAT is nice practice for the SAT or the AC test because it's um, an easier test. It's just not quite as high a level as the SAT or the ACT. So that gives them a little bit more practice filling in a little bit easier test so that they can kind of ease into the situation. Um, so it's really not the high stakes test, it's sort of practice for the high stakes test. Now this year, if you're only taking a test for fun, just for practice, you don't really need to take the PSAT. You could practice with a real SAT test or real ACT test in the spring. So if you can't register for a PSAT, you have options if this is just going to be for practice. But I wanted to spend a moment and talk about what do you do when your child is super smart and also a very good test taker. And then the PSAT may be how they qualify for the National Merit Scholarship test. In fact, that's why the PSAT has the last name. It's the PSAT NMSQT. National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, okay? So it's only a qualifying test when you take it in 11th grade. So if you have 11th grader and you're in the middle of a pandemic, oh my goodness, what do you do? Um, well, you know, the pandemic is kind of slowly rolling its way across the country. I live by the ocean, so it's sort of like waves, you know? And you don't really know where you're gonna be in the wave when the test comes around. So it's hard to know really whether your school is going to be open in order for them to even take the test. For that reason, the College Board updated their policy just for this year to be very special because of the pandemic. So the first thing that they did is they added more test dates. Usually it's just one week out of the year on a Wednesday or a Saturday, they give you that test. And if you miss it, you just miss it. And I'm sorry, you know, that's all you get. 
but this year they've added more dates. So they have the usual October 14 and October 17, but they've also added October 29th. Now be careful, look at that carefully because it was originally gonna be the 28th. Okay, so Thursday, October 29th, but then they also added Tuesday, January 26, which is not October at all. <laughs> um, you want to read the rules very carefully, though, because while the schools can administer the test on multiple dates, the student can only take it one time. So what do you do? Well, based on this information, if you have an 11th grader, I would call the public or private schools, find out which day they hope to provide testing, and any public or private high school is liable to let you take the test, register for the first test date that's available. And if it doesn't work, you'll be able to register for further tests. There's going to be um, some anxiety about that because each test location, each school may not want to have lots and lots of students in a room. So there's going to be some variation in how well they accommodate for this. Now, if, um, if you're thinking that your child is a good test taker, then having them take the PSAT is going to be worth the trouble that you go through. Prior to 11th grade, it really is just for practice. And so it may not be worth the effort at all. Really, the PSAT is just a, a tool for parents to use to estimate test scores on the SAT. Uh, and gives the child practice taking tests in front of a group. It's not a magical scholarship finding device unless your teenager is in 11th grade and they tend to score in the top 5% of the nation. I'm sorry, in your state. That's, that's the other thing I didn't get a chance to tell you. The PSAT, it depends on your state how well you do. Now, if they are not a good test taker, then the PSAT is not necessary. You can focus on the SAT or ACT instead uh, because there are many dates and times available for those tests. Uh, it's offered multiple times a year. So you should be able to find a test time when it will be available to you. Now, um, this year, you want to remember that mass testing in a public school may not be the best idea, right? And not a good idea to cram people together during a pandemic. After all, health always trumps uh, your, your school every day of the week. It's always more important to have a healthy teenager. So it may not be worth pursuing this year. But if you do decide that the PSAT this year is a good idea for you, the College Board is trying to be flexible so that schools can adhere to safety and social distancing guidelines. So what are they doing? Well, this year only, they're trying to make it easier for them to have fewer students in each test location. Uh, so they do that by allowing some off-site testing if the test needs to be somewhere else. Uh, they're allowing flexible start times so that they can test half of the population in the morning and half the population in the afternoon. Uh, they're allowing them to split to uh, different days and different test groups on a different day. Half the school tests on this day, half the school tests on this day, which is different. And this year, they're actually not charging schools for the unused test which is nice for homeschoolers, not because we're gonna be charged for the unused test, but because then schools are more likely to let you take the test, register for the test if they're not gonna be penalized for it. Just remember that it's the local school that will make the final decision closer to the administration dates. And one of the things that I'm seeing already is that some test registrations, they just don't, don't happen. You know, people have showed up on the day of the test and uh, find the doors closed and it's very upsetting. Uh, so try to not only be thankful for the flexibility that they are demonstrating, but also try to have some flexibility yourself because it's not always the college board decision that says we can't have the test today. Sometimes it's the school's decision. And these two organizations have to be working together. 
Now listen, if you have a super smart kid, there has always been a way for super smart students to get into the National Merit Scholarship qualifying situation when something prevented them from taking the PSAT in 11th grade. If they were in the hospital or in a car accident or uh, there was a death in the family or something, there's always been a way for them to start. And my guess is that process will still be available to even large numbers of students if you've been affected by the coronavirus. So they've always had this policy that just says, are you unable to take the PSAT? So let me read it. It says, if you do not take the 2020 PSAT because of illness or emergency or other extenuating circumstances, can I just say that a pandemic would be an extenuating circumstance? And anytime we're living under a national state of emergency, say that would be an extenuating circumstance. So let me keep reading. You may still be able to enter the 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program to request information about another route of entry into the National Merit Scholarship. You just write to them, the National Merit Scholarship Corporation, as soon as possible, but definitely not later than April 1. <laughs> the alternative entry must include your name, home address, contact information of the person making the request. Okay, so that would be you as the homeschool administrator. Um, then the name and address of your high school and a brief explanation of why you missed the test. Do not delay, they say, the earlier you write, the more options you have for scheduling test dates. And your letter has to be postmarked on or before April Fool's Day, April 1, for your request to be considered. So what I would suggest is if you cannot get your child into the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, the PSAT, in 11th grade, by the end of January, the last time that they are administering that test, immediately write them a letter with all of the things that they spell out and explain to them um, that your child does tend to score high and that you would like them to have uh, the ability to qualify for the National Merit Scholar. Now remember that, that detail about writing that letter that only matters if your child tends to get sky high test scores and they're super smart and a really good test taker. Um, and so that's my advice to you is to prioritize your child's needs. Uh, each child is different and to make sure that you're putting health uh, above school. And I encourage you to learn more about the PSAT.